The curtains moved gently in the summer wind. The smell of flowers came in through the open window. And in the distance there was the faint noise of London traffic. It was very peaceful in the artist's studio. Lord Henry Wootton was lying back in a large chair, smoking a cigarette. He was watching the blue smoke rise to the ceiling. And he was also watching his friend, Basil Hallward, the artist. Basil was standing in front of a painting which was nearly finished. It was the portrait of a young man, a very beautiful young man. Basil and Lord Henry were good friends. They had studied at Oxford University together. Now they were both about thirty years old. Basil worked very hard, and he was a well known artist. Lord Henry, who was called Harry by his friends, did not work at all. He was a rich man. He spent his money on expensive food and clothes and on valuable books and paintings. Lord Henry pointed towards the painting. That is the best portrait you have ever painted, Basil. He said, "You must show it in the best art gallery in London." Lord Henry continued, "Everybody must see it." "I am not going to show this picture in a gallery," Basil replied. "Not going to show it," said Harry in surprise. "You artists are silly people. You want to be famous. You become famous, then you don't like being famous. Think, Basil." It's bad when people talk about you, but it's worse when they don't talk about you. Why won't you show the picture? I know you will laugh at me, Harry," answered Basil, "but I can't show the picture because it shows too much of me. It is too much like me." "Nonsense," said Harry. "The picture does not look like you at all." You have black hair and a strong, intelligent face, but you are not beautiful, Basil. The young man in the portrait has blonde hair and a pale face, and he is beautiful. You don't understand me at all, Harry," said Basil. "I don't mean that I look like Dorian Gray. Dorian Gray, is that the young man's name? Yes, that is his name." I didn't want to tell you. Basil stopped talking and went out of the door into the garden. Harry laughed and followed him. The two young men sat on a long wooden seat under a laurel tree. The summer wind moved through the shiny leaves. Harry looked at his watch. I shall have to go soon, Basil, he said. But first, I want an answer to my question. What question? Asked Basil. Why won't you show the picture of Dorian Gray in a gallery? What is the reason? I told you the reason," said Basil. "It is too much like me." But what do you mean?" asked Harry. "I am an artist," said Basil. "An artist paints pictures of other people, but I believe that an artist shows his own feelings in every picture he paints." Each time I paint a picture, I show feelings that are inside me. I don't want people to look at the picture of Dorian Gray. I don't want them to find out about my feelings. Basil stopped speaking. Harry bent down and picked a small white flower from the grass. And what are your feelings, Basil? Tell me," he said. He looked closely at the tiny flower. At last, Basil spoke again. I met Dorian at a party. It was Lady Brandon's party, and a lot of people were there. Dorian and I saw each other at the same time. I felt afraid, but I don't know why. Then I felt that this person was very important to me. I felt that I had known him for a long time. Somebody introduced Dorian to me. Somebody made a joke, and we both laughed. Suddenly, Dorian and I were friends. Well, laughter is the best beginning for a friendship," said Harry, "and it's the best ending for a friendship too." Harry, you are never serious," said Basil. "Dorian is my closest friend. I see him every day. He is the most important thing in my life. He is more important to me than my work. But 
I thought your work was the most important thing in your life, Basil," said Harry. "It is important, but I need Dorian. I'm a better artist now that I know Dorian. Do you remember that picture of the landscape, the woods and fields? Everybody thought it was my best painting. Do you know why it was good? It was good because Dorian was there. He saw me paint it. Dorian has the power to make me a better artist. But I don't want him to know this. I don't want anybody to know. So I can't show the painting in a gallery. It shows too much of me. It's too much like me. I think you are wrong, Basil," said Harry. Poets put their feelings into their poems, and they make money. So artists must put their feelings into their pictures. Then they can make money too. Then Harry thought of something else. "You will get tired of this beautiful young man," he said. "One day his beauty will disappear, and Dorian Gray won't be interesting any more." No, Harry, that is not true. Don't talk like that," said Basil. "Dorian's beauty is not important to me. Dorian himself is important to me. Dorian Gray must be an interesting young man," said Harry. "I want to meet him." "I don't want you to meet him," replied Basil quickly. "You don't want me to meet him?" "No." Suddenly, Basil's servant came out into the garden. Mr. Dorian Gray is here, sir. He is in the studio," he said. <laughs> "I will have to meet Dorian now," said Harry, laughing. "Please tell Mr. Gray that I am coming," said Basil to the servant. Then Basil turned to Harry. He was upset, and he spoke slowly to Harry. "Please be careful, Harry," he said. "Dorian is beautiful and very young. You are never serious, and you say strange things." Don't talk to him, please. Don't try to influence him, to change him. Your influence would be bad, and I need him. I need him to help me with my work. You're talking nonsense," said Harry, smiling. Now introduce me to Dorian Gray. He took hold of Basil's arm and led him into the studio. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. The young man was sitting at the piano when Basil and Harry came into the studio. He was turned away from them, looking at a book of music, but he heard Basil's footsteps. Dorian spoke immediately. "Oh, Basil," he said, "do you have to work today? I don't want you to paint me today." I don't want a life-size portrait of myself. Then he turned and saw Harry. He stopped speaking. His face became red. Oh, I—I uh, I didn't know you had a visitor. Dorian said, "Basil, this is Lord Henry Wotton, a good friend of mine. We went to university together. I have told him that you like my painting of you, and now he won't believe me." Nonsense, Basil said, "Harry." I'm very pleased to meet you, Mr. Gray. Harry and Dorian shook hands. Harry looked at Dorian Gray. Harry and Basil were both about thirty years old. Dorian was much younger; he was about twenty, and he was very beautiful. His hair was blonde, his face was pale, and his eyes were bright blue. Basil did not want Harry to talk to Dorian. Harry, he said. I want to start painting now. Please, will you go away? Harry did not want to go. Do you want me to go, Mr. Gray? He asked. I will go if you want me to go, or I will stay if you want me to stay. Yes, do stay, Lord Henry," answered Dorian. "Mr. Gray wants me to stay, Basil," said Harry. "You don't mind if I stay, do you?" Basil wanted to please Dorian. No, of course I don't mind. Please stay, Harry," he said. But Basil went on. "You must not listen to Harry, Dorian. He is never serious, and he says strange things. He changes people. He has a bad influence on people." Harry, sit down," 
Basil continued. Dorian, come and stand over here, and please don't move around too much. I want to finish your portrait today. Basil started to paint. Harry sat in the comfortable chair and smoked a cigarette. There was silence for a few minutes. Then Dorian spoke. Are you a bad influence on people, Lord Henry? he asked. Do you make people change what they think and do? I cannot be a bad influence or a good influence, replied Harry, because all influence is bad. It is bad to change a person. It is bad to give a person your thoughts and ideas. Why? asked Dorian. Everybody is different from everybody else, answered Harry. You must not influence a person. You must not make a person the same as yourself. You must live your own life. You must do everything that you want to do. You must enjoy life, the good things and the evil things. You must not worry about what other people think. Dorian was confused. Harry was wrong to say these things, but Harry was clever. He had a thin face and clever dark eyes. He had a beautiful slow voice. Dorian liked listening to Harry speaking. Dorian had never met anyone like Harry before. Harry did not speak again for a few minutes. He touched his small pointed beard and he watched Dorian. Harry knew Dorian was thinking about the things he had said. Basil continued painting. He had not listened to Harry talking. Suddenly, Dorian spoke. Basil, I'm tired of standing here, he said. I'm too hot. I want to go out into the garden. Oh, Dorian, I'm sorry, replied Basil. When I am painting, I think of nothing else. Yes, you can go into the garden. Harry, you go with Dorian. I'll go on painting. Harry and Dorian went out into the garden. Dorian was thinking about the things Harry had said. Come and sit under the laurel tree, said Harry. You must not get burned by the sun. So they sat on the long wooden seat. Dorian looked at the man who was sitting beside him. Harry was much older and cleverer than he was. Why mustn't I get sunburned? Dorian asked. Your skin is pale. You mustn't get sunburned because you must take care of your beauty, said Harry. You are young and you are beautiful, and youth is very valuable. Dorian looked at Harry's long white hands and listened to Harry's beautiful slow voice. One day you will be old, said Harry. Your face will be wrinkled. You will be old and wrinkled and ugly. You will not be young, so you will not be beautiful any more. And it will be too late to do anything interesting and exciting. So, Mr. Gray, you must enjoy life while you are young and beautiful. You must do everything you want to do. You must find out about life and people. You must not worry about what other people think. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. Suddenly they heard Basil's voice. He sounded happy. I'm waiting, he called. Come back into the studio so I can continue painting. I'm painting very well today. Dorian stood without speaking while Basil painted. Harry sat in the armchair. The room was very quiet. The curtains moved gently, and there was the sweet smell of flowers. After a quarter of an hour, Basil stopped painting. He looked at Dorian for a long time. Then, for a long time, he looked at the picture. It is finished at last, he cried. Then he picked up a paintbrush. He wrote his name in large red letters at the bottom of the picture. Harry walked across the studio to look at the picture. It was a wonderful painting, and it looked exactly like Dorian. Congratulations, Basil, said Harry. It is the best portrait I have ever seen. Dorian, come and look at yourself. Dorian stood in front of the painting and looked at it. 
At first he was pleased. He smiled at the painting. He smiled because he saw that he was a beautiful young man. Then Dorian stopped smiling. Suddenly he remembered what Harry had said in the garden. Dorian Gray was young and beautiful now, but soon he would be old and wrinkled and ugly. He would not have blonde hair or bright blue eyes. No one would want to look at him then. Silently, Dorian stood in front of his picture. Basil did not understand why the young man was silent. Basil was confused. Don't you like the picture? he asked. Of course he likes it, said Harry. It's a wonderful painting. I want to buy it, Basil. I must buy it. No, Harry, replied Basil. I can't sell it. The picture belongs to Dorian. I have given it to him. Dorian is very lucky, said Harry. Then Dorian spoke. It's very sad, he whispered. I shall grow old and wrinkled and ugly, but this picture will always be young. This picture will never be older than it is today. I wish that I could always be young. I wish that the picture could grow old instead of me. I would give anything and everything for this to happen. I would give my soul. It would not be very nice for Basil if the painting grew old, Dorian, said Harry, laughing. That's right, said Basil, laughing too. I don't want that to happen. I don't want an old, ugly picture. But Dorian did not laugh. You care about your painting more than you care about me, Basil, he shouted. You care about me now because I am young and beautiful. When I am old and ugly, you won't care about me any more. It's not fair that the picture will always be beautiful, Dorian said. I hate the picture. It will be young when I am old. Dorian ran to the big armchair. He laid his head on his arms and cried. Harry, said Basil angrily, this has happened because of you. This is your fault. I asked you not to talk to Dorian. Harry shook his head. No, Basil, it's not my fault. Dorian is learning about life. Well, said Basil, you are my two closest friends, but you have made me hate my best painting, so I will destroy it. Basil picked up a knife from a table near him. He was going to cut up the picture and destroy it. Suddenly Dorian ran across the room and pulled the knife from Basil's hand. Don't, Basil! Don't destroy the painting! It, it will be murder! Don't, please! Well, I'm happy that you like the picture now, Dorian, said Basil. When the paint is dry, you can have your portrait. Now, he continued, shall we have some tea? Basil rang a bell, and soon his servant brought the tea. The three friends drank their tea quietly. Then Harry spoke. Let's go to the theatre this evening, he said. I don't think I want to go to the theatre, answered Basil. I would very much like to go to the theatre with you, Lord Henry, said Dorian quickly. Don't go, Dorian, said Basil. Stay here and have dinner with me. I can't, Basil. I want to go to the theatre with Lord Henry, said Dorian. Harry listened and smiled. He knew Dorian would go with him. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. Harry did not know much about Dorian Gray. Basil had told Harry very little about the young man. But Harry wanted to know all about Dorian. So Harry asked his friends in London about Dorian Gray. He asked about Dorian's family. Harry enjoyed the story of Dorian Gray. It was a sad and romantic story about love and death. Dorian's grandfather was Lord Kelso, a very rich old man. Dorian's mother was Lord Kelso's daughter, the beautiful Lady Margaret. Lady Margaret fell in love when she was very young. She ran away from home and married a soldier, but she did not have a happy life. Lord Kelso was very angry and never talked to Lady Margaret again. Dorian's father, the soldier, was killed before Dorian was born. Lady Margaret died before Dorian was a year old, so Dorian was an orphan. 
Harry was very pleased with the story of Dorian Gray. He knew that Dorian was beautiful and young. Now he also knew that Dorian was an orphan. And he knew that Dorian was going to be very rich. Soon Dorian would be twenty-one. Then he would have all Lord Kelso's money. Yes, it was a sad and romantic story. Now Harry was even more interested in Dorian Gray. Harry saw Dorian many times in the next few weeks. They met in people's houses and at art galleries and in theatres. Harry wanted to talk to Dorian. Dorian had listened to Harry in Basil's studio. Harry wanted the young man to listen to him again and again. He wanted to give his thoughts and ideas to the young man. So Harry talked and talked. At the theatre and at parties and at dinners. He laughed and played games with words. He said funny things, he said clever things, and he said dangerous things. Everybody listened to Harry. But Harry was not talking to everybody. He was talking to Dorian. Sometimes Dorian smiled. Sometimes his eyes were wide open with surprise. Dorian listened to everything Harry said. It was a month after Harry had met Dorian at Basil's studio. Harry had been out to lunch and he arrived home in the middle of the afternoon. You are very late, Harry, said a voice. I've been waiting a long time to see you. The voice sounded very unhappy. Harry went into the library. You're very late, Harry, said Dorian again. I wanted to see you. I've got something to tell you. I'm in love, Harry. I have to tell you. I'm in love with the most beautiful girl. There was silence. Then Harry said, Who are you in love with? With an actress, answered Dorian. His face became red. Oh, Dorian, Harry said, sitting down. All young men fall in love with actresses. Don't say that, Harry. You haven't seen her. Who is she? Her name is Sybil Vane. I've never heard of her. She isn't well known yet, said Dorian. But everybody will know about her soon. One day she will be famous. She's a wonderful actress. Oh, is she? said Harry, lying back in his chair. Tell me about Sybil Vane. Where did you meet her? I will tell you about her, Harry, but you must be kind to me. You mustn't laugh at me. I met her because of you. Because of me? said Harry. Yes. You told me to find out about life. You told me to enjoy life, the good things and the evil things. So I went out. I walked around London. There was excitement and danger everywhere. I knew that something wonderful was going to happen. Then, one night, I went to a different part of London. I had not been there before. At about half past eight, I was in front of a dirty little theatre. The manager was standing outside. He was a horrible man. He was fat and dirty. It's a pound for a ticket, sir, he said. Buy a ticket for the best seat in the theatre, sir. And he took his hat off. Dorian stopped speaking because Harry had started to laugh. Don't laugh at me, Harry, he said. It's cruel of you to laugh at me. I'm telling you how I met Sybil. The play was Romeo and Juliet by Shakespeare, Dorian went on. Romeo was a fat, ugly old actor, but Juliet was a beautiful young actress. She was about seventeen years old. Her hair was dark brown. Her face was small and pale, like a little flower. Her eyes were large and dark blue. I fell in love with her immediately. I have been to that theatre every night for three weeks. I have seen Sybil act in lots of different plays. She is a wonderful actress. Why didn't you tell me about actresses? Because everybody falls in love with actresses, Dorian, said Harry. You are cruel, Harry. I wish I had not told you about Sybil. You had to tell me about Sybil, answered Harry. You will always tell me everything that you do. Now tell me more. Oh, Harry, said Dorian, Sybil is wonderful. She calls me Prince Charming. Harry laughed, but he was pleased. Dorian had been a quiet, frightened boy when they met at Basil's studio. 
Now he was growing into a man and learning about life. Harry, I want you to see Sybil. I want you to see her act in Romeo and Juliet. Very well, Dorian. I shall come tomorrow, and I shall bring Basil too. Oh, Basil, yes. I'm afraid I haven't seen him for a week. He sent me my portrait, and I haven't thanked him. I do like the picture, Harry. Dorian continued. I am pleased with it, but it stays young and beautiful while I grow older. Today I am a whole month older than the picture. Harry smiled. We will see you tomorrow night at seven o'clock at the theatre, he said. Dorian left the house, and Harry sat for a while in the library. He thought about Dorian. Harry's brown eyes shone with pleasure. He was pleased that Dorian was in love. He wanted to see what Dorian did next. Harry did not care if Dorian was sad or happy. He had told Dorian to enjoy life, the good things and the evil things, and Harry was going to watch what Dorian did. It was late and the sun was low in the sky. Harry got up from his chair and went to change his clothes. He went out to dinner. When he returned home that evening, there was a telegram waiting for him. It said that Dorian was engaged to be married to Sybil Vane. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. Mother, I'm so happy," whispered Sybil Vane. "I'm very, very happy." And I hope you are happy too. Mrs. Vane did not look very happy. She was a small, thin woman who always looked tired. There was a lot of makeup on her face and on her dry, thin mouth. Oh, Sybil," she said, "you mustn't think about the young man who comes to the theatre. You must think about your acting. Mr. Isaacs will be angry if you don't act well. He has given us a lot of money, and you mustn't make a theatre manager angry." I don't like Mr. Isaac's mother, and I don't care about money," replied Sybil. "I'm in love with Prince Charming." Sybil, Mr. Isaac's gave us fifty pounds to pay our bills and buy clothes for James. You love James. You love your brother, don't you?" said Mrs. Vane. "Yes, of course I do," replied Sybil. "But we have Prince Charming now. He will help us. We don't need Mr. Isaac's." Sybil Vane lived with her mother and brother James. They lived in London, but they lived in a small house in the north of London, a long way from Harry's large, expensive house. It was the day after Sybil had become engaged to Dorian. Sybil and her mother were talking in their small living room. Sybil said, "Her mother, you are too young to fall in love. We don't know anything about this young man. I am very worried about you." And you know James is going away tomorrow. I'm worried about James too. James is going away to Australia, and you have fallen in love. What am I going to do? At that moment, the door opened, and James Vane came into the room. He was sixteen years old, and he did not look like his sister. Sybil was small and beautiful, with shining brown hair. James was large, with big hands and feet. His hair was dull and dark. He smiled at Sybil. "Let's go for a walk," he said. "I want to talk to you." Sybil went to get her coat, and James spoke to his mother. "I'm worried about Sybil," he said. "I'm worried about the young man who comes to see her every night at the theatre." "Don't worry, James," Mrs. Vane replied. "Young men often fall in love with actresses." "But you don't know his name," said James angrily. "Mother, you must take care of Sybil." Sybil and James went for a walk in Hyde Park. The park was busy. There were lots of people. There were people walking and people sitting in carriages pulled by horses. Sybil was happy. I think you will have a wonderful life in Australia, James. I think you will become rich. I think. She stopped speaking because James was not listening to her. Who is the young man who comes to see you? He asked. Who is he? You don't know his name, do you? 